How would you like to comment on this uh, big decision announced by International Monetary Fund? Uh, this uh, IMF uh, program uh, that is uh, another lifeline for Pakistan's economy. Prime Minister of Pakistan also said uh, that Pakistan has accepted uh, one of the toughest conditions from IMF. And he always called it a, as a very uh, a tough medicine uh, for Pakistani people. I'm a program is just like antibiotic. If you don't complete the uh, yes. course, next time when you take that antibiotic, uh, one would have to go for a higher potency or a higher dose. Why economic reforms in Pakistan have never been successful? Almost all the political parties, they have uh, their strengths in uh, power. And uh, uh, most of these parties, when they are in opposition, uh, they uh, hate IMF and uh, they oppose anything that uh, the government of that time wants to do. How on these two fronts, Pakistan can overcome these two big challenges, fight against terrorism and political stability? We need to uh, uh, bring uh, more transparency in the system. We need to bring more uh, openness in the system. We need to start taking uh, inclusive uh, decisions. <laughs>
Now, uh, Pakistan would be using uh, this amount as buffer and would be uh, utilizing uh, the reserves uh, to uh, pay back uh, to the uh, dividends and uh, profits uh, to multinational companies uh, or to commercial uh, banks or to use uh, uh, other uh, uh, expenses. Uh, so uh, basically, IMF's money is uh, to uh, shore up our foreign exchange reserves and uh, uh, to uh, support us in uh, maintaining uh, balance of payment pr uh, process. Uh, the advantage is that it would uh, keep our rupee uh, stable. So, rupee value of rupee versus dollar, uh, that uh, depends on any country's uh, monetary uh, reserves. And uh, due to this uh, IMF for being an IMF program, uh, the value of rupee would remain stable. That's uh, very good uh, news that uh, uh, because of this amount available in Pakistani Kitty, the uh, Pakistani rupee will remain stable. So another important thing is Pakistani Prime Minister time and again said that this will be last program of Pakistan with IMF. Do you think so after getting these all programs uh, through installments, once this $7 billion package is completely given to Pakistan, uh, do you think in future Pakistan won't need IMF program? That uh, depends on uh, the implementation of the uh, current program. So it is a 24 program for Pakistan and in the past successive governments they have adopted this approach, transactional approach, one or two tranches from IMF and then succumbing to political pressure, going back from whatever they had committed with IMF and the resultant program gets suspended. Now this time again we have to see whether Pakistan will be able to increase its tax to GDP ratio by uh, 3%, whether Pakistan will be uh, able to uh, privatize and offload its uh, loss-making uh, uh, public sector enterprises, uh, whether Pakistan would be able to uh, transfer the cost of generation of electricity uh, to uh, consumers. So some of uh, these uh, uh, commitments uh, that Pakistan has uh, made in order to balance its expenditures with the, uh, its uh, uh, revenues. Uh, those are politically uh, quite uh, tough, not only for people of Pakistan, but also for the government of Pakistan that has to uh, face uh, its uh, voters. And uh, the uh, real test would be uh, how skillfully and uh, uh, how honestly uh, government of Pakistan can actually uh, implement this uh, program as it did uh, in case of a standby agreement uh, by the caretaker government. Prime Minister of Pakistan also said uh, that Pakistan has accepted uh, one of the toughest conditions from IMF. And he always called it a, as a very uh, a tough medicine uh, for Pakistani people. So what do you think? What prudent measures which have been taken by government of Pakistan as far as economic reforms are concerned are to what extent Pakistani people will be facing those tough conditions? Well, uh, if we don't, uh, IMF program is just like antibiotic. If you don't complete the uh, course, next time when you take that antibiotic, uh, one would have to go for a higher potency or a higher dose. So similarly, because condition. of because of uh, our uh, uh, suspending uh, uh, successive uh, programs, uh, uh, IMF uh, now have asked Pakistan to do the front loading, and front loading uh, means that uh, uh, all the conditionalities that Pakistan has agreed with the IMF, uh, those need to be completed uh, in advance of uh, getting a tranche. Uh, and in that context, uh, of course, it's a, a tough uh, program. Uh, but uh, then again, uh, uh, if one looks at uh, the previous uh, five or six uh, IMF programs, uh, most of the things that we are uh, uh, committing in this program, those remain the same. Uh, privatization, uh, this... Uh, <coughs> passing on electricity uh, tariffs, increasing tax to GDP uh, ratio, uh, giving more autonomy to our regulators, etc. So uh, my argument is that uh, if uh, done uh, once for all, perhaps it can uh, uh, give uh, some direction to our uh, economy. But in doing so, uh, government would have to take care of low and low middle income earners. Uh, yes, this uh, transition is important, but the cost of transition uh, need not to be passed on to uh, those uh, who are economically less privileged. And uh, I think uh, that's uh, where uh, the real test is, uh, that uh, how government can ensure targeted subsidies or targeted initiatives uh, for uh, our lower and lower middle-income uh, uh, middle earners 
so that uh, their life uh, doesn't become extraordinary tough. And those who can afford, perhaps uh, it's uh, uh, time for them uh, to uh, contribute a little extra uh, towards stabilizing Pakistan's economy. Top sir, you have rightly pointed out that the low income and middle income people are adversely affected due to this uh, tough economic uh, conditions which Pakistan is facing. Recently, you might have also seen there have been reports that independent power producers have minted huge money in terms of dollars from government of Pakistan without producing any electricity. So what do you think this huge IPP sector also needs to be uh, reformed and their agreements need to be revisited so that uh, the money which they are taking from government of Pakistan in foreign exchange, particularly in dollars, that could be saved. Well, uh, many of those agreements, they are sovereign uh, guaranteed back agreement and it would be difficult for government to unilaterally uh, abolish uh, those uh, contracts. But uh, the forensic audit of uh, some of those IPPs to ascertain uh, how much uh, fuel did they use to produce, uh, uh, how many units of electricity uh, are to ascertain their real expenses, uh, are to ascertain, the, uh, ascertain uh, their cost of installation, etc. Uh, that can be done and on the basis of which uh, uh, many of uh, their claims could can be verified uh, whether they are genuine claims, whether Pakistani government uh, owe that, uh, that much uh, money or uh, can we get some sort of uh, uh, discount and uh, I think uh, that approach uh, would work but uh, uh, abandoning those agreements uh, that would uh, uh, open up uh, legal Pandora box for Pakistan. In also, you rightly in the beginning you said that uh, uh, due to the economic successful economic reforms, then Pakistan could achieve economic stability, and in future Pakistan won't need IMF program. You have been directly or indirectly part of the economic reforms process. Why economic reforms in Pakistan have never been successful? Uh, because of politicization of economic uh, policies. Uh, so. Almost all the political parties, they have uh, their strengths in uh, power and uh, uh, most of these parties, when they are in opposition, uh, they uh, hate IMF and uh, they oppose anything that uh, the government of that time wants to do uh, with IMF. When they come in power, uh, the uh, sides uh, switch and uh, the party who was in power start opposing IMF program and uh, uh, the party who was in opposition now in government. Uh, they start implementing it. So I think we need to uh, uh, decide uh, one for all that uh, these uh, reforms, they are uh, needed and if they are needed, uh, perhaps uh, we need to implement them with the whole uh, political uh, will. Uh, now, I have been saying it uh, to PMLN and People's Party in the uh, PTI government that if they have any alternative, they should present that alternative. Uh, and, uh, they were saying, I, my, my, Macau March uh, scheme uh, ending inflation uh, or uh, other uh, long march. So my question to, uh, to them used to be that uh, if you have any alternatives, please present that alternative by being part of solution. Uh, similarly, now my question to PTI and Jamaat Islami is that if they have any alternative whereby they think that Pakistani economy can do without uh, accessing IMF fund, they should come up with uh, uh, those options. So of course. Uh, uh, countries and economies, they can't run on wish list uh, and uh, either uh, the political system and the political parties, they have to be part of solution uh, so that uh, they can provide uh, an alternative solution or they should uh, stop opposing for the sake of uh, opposition. So uh, I think uh, this opposing for the sake of opposition, uh, that had uh, pressurized uh, uh, previous governments to come to political pressure uh, to uh, 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 the commitments uh, that they are made with the IMF resulting in uh, suspension of uh, programs. So this time we need to make sure that such suspension doesn't occur. Uh, quickly shortcut, uh, what are the shortcut ways Pakistan can have its income in US dollars so that in future loans could be uh, repaid to all the institutions from where Pakistan got loans, including IMF. And then, uh, of course, Pakistan uh, need to make uh, foreign payments to import certain necessary items. Uh, these are the areas where Pakistan need definitely uh, foreign currency account, particularly in US dollars. Tell us uh, our viewers how Pakistan can generate this particular income. What are the potential areas? Well, there are four ways, of, four ways of uh, uh, generating uh, dollars uh, through exports, uh, 
through uh, foreign direct investment through remittances uh, and through loans and uh, grants uh, mm. of course export uh, right now unless and until this uh, electricity tariff uh, issue gets settled uh, exporters they would have an excuse uh, uh, of uh, uh, not to uh, uh, actually increase uh, their export earning uh, many of them they are not bringing their export proceed to pakistan due to uh, heavy taxation they have their accounts offshore accounts uh, are their companies registered in third countries where they are putting uh, these export proceeds the foreign direct investment uh, debt uh, directly relates and depends on political stability of a country law and order uh, and situation security. Uh, exactly security. remittances uh, remains a con- uh, very constant uh, source of uh, pakistani dollars uh, followed by rollovers and loans and grants so uh, government have to work on all these four fronts try to see that uh, from where such uh, uh, dollar inflow can be uh, improved you have just talked about security stability and political stability both are wide in pakistan pakistan is currently facing one of the toughest wave of terrorism in balochistan and kp province and there are certain political indicators which also shows pakistan is going through political instability quickly tell us you have been uh, a political analyst as well and you have been expert of political economy as well how on these two fronts pakistan can overcome these two big challenge fight against terrorism and political stability uh, well uh, i think uh, the three deficit that pakistan is facing right now uh, dollar deficit uh, rupee deficit in more expenditure than income and the trust deficit uh, between uh, uh, different uh, uh, pillars of uh, government and trust deficit between uh, different segments of society vis-a-vis uh, government i think we need to work on uh, bridging this uh, trust deficit if trust deficit is uh, bridge uh, the other two deficit can be taken care of uh, but uh, uh, for now my worry is uh, that uh, we have become an extremely fractured and an extremely a uh, uh, politicized uh, 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 nation uh, which is uh, actually divided uh, across all possible fissures and uh, that is eroding our uh, societal trust so we need to uh, uh, bring uh, more transparency in the system we need to bring more uh, openness in the system we need to start taking uh, inclusive uh, decisions uh, it's uh, including all stakeholders uh, to take those inclusive decisions that would help us uh, Uh, bridging uh, that uh, tr- trust deficit dogs up uh, you have time and again written and we have been also listening this from the leadership that the bitter pill has to be taken by the common people why not by the rich elite which needs have, to sacrifice i have already, i have already said that in order to implement this program uh, lower and lower middle income earners those need to be insulated and uh, uh, i think uh, those who can afford uh, they have to pay an extra share uh, and uh, elites uh, they need to think that uh, their uh, uh, elite life standard is if pakistan is and uh, if pakistan's economy is uh, perhaps they need to now get ready to sacrifice and uh, start paying their uh, due share of uh, uh, taxes uh, this is a way forward for uh, pakistan's economic revival thank you so much indeed uh, dr abid uh, kayum sulari saab and uh, dear viewers he said that only a viable fu- a stable economic future of pakistan when elite needs to sacrifice more and more benefits need to be given to the common man and i'm a program was necessary for stabilizing pakistan economy but in future pakistan economy needs to grow economic reforms process need to be completed once again dr selary sir despite your busy schedule in new york you spoke to program inside in video news english and dear viewers still our next program Goodbye and good office from Studios. Thank you. Thank you.